Hey guys, this is Abyssy Playback, and welcome to the re-recording of my Mods of the Week episode number one. As some of you may know, my first Mods of the Week episode, which I recorded using uh, free software available on the internet, didn't go so well. And um, I thought I'd just record it, re-record it. I've added a couple new mods, and I've updated some of the ones that I was reviewing. Uh, I was impressed by how quickly they'd updated since when I downloaded them, actually. And I thought I'd start with this mod this time, which is the Knights of the Nine armor. I'm sure those of you who have seen, who have played the Elder Scrolls IV Ob Oblivion, uh, recognise this armor. It's, in my opinion, on this game, been very well done. And in my first video, it was only available as a male rehash of the steel armor. It's still forgeable anywhere, but it is also available in a female version. Now you may also notice, um, give me a second, that this sword I'm carrying isn't a standard sword in game. This is the Knight Sword, and it's one of a massive number of swords available with the Jesus Swords mod. Now, it's a very impressive mod that adds, I think it's 50-some craftable in-game weapons. All of them are swords, I believe, at this point. And, um... They look really cool. There's Knight Swords, Crusader Swords, uh, some Dragon-based swords, and some named ones, even. So I'm just going to show a couple of the recipes available for those now. So some of these might not be from the mod I'm saying. I've got a couple swords, sword mods running at the same time. But the Akaviri sword is part of the Jesus saw mod, I believe. As is the Alban sword. Um, Zura Brand again. Pretty sure that's Jesus sword. Um, Crusader sword is Jesus sword again, and so are these. There's also some nice swords here. Some of which I'm not sure. They might be Knights of the Nine mods. They might be from. They might be from the um, Jesus swords mod. Again, swords like this, magnificent sword, which is magnificent, are. Members of the Jesus Sword mod. If you look further down, you can see there that here I have battle staves, silver weapons making comeback, etc. And um, this is part of the Third Era Weapons mod, which adds loads of things that I'm sure plenty of you will recognise from Elder Scrolls Three Morrowind. Um, notably the Nodacha, Tanto and Waz Wazishai, I believe is how you say it. Which are all very impressive and also rehashes of the Daedric and Ebony swords with the third era Daedric sword and the So it's right at the bottom. Imperial Ebony Sword, which in my opinion look much better than the versions available in Skyrim. Again, this isn't an insult to the original Bethesda designs. They were amazing, but you, know, you can't get everything completely right, and that's why we have mods. So I'm going to show off two pretty good ebony weapons, the Simtar and the Azord, on my friendly saber castle. which provides a perfect opportunity to show off my next mod, at least partially, which is called Unrestricted Conjuration. Now, this mod allows you to summon many more thralls, uh, thralls, antinarchs, or any other summonable creatures you've got from other mods than you could normally. It also allows you to use the thrall spell, as I'm going to show you here, 
on creatures. Yeah, this is very useful and um, it's very impressive. I'm just going to summon some other things to show you that the limit has been increased. It's been increased actually to 30 and I'm pretty sure you can make it even higher if you use just some basic editing, uh, especially with the creation kit that's out now. I haven't used any creation devices myself, so I wouldn't know. I'm going to leave that. But um, these here, these are examples of the Midas Magic mod, which is one of the, if not the best, single mod out for Skyrim at the moment. In my opinion, I play a mage most of the time. Um, it adds over 60 new spells to the game, including some ridiculously impressive ones. I'll just show off a couple here. We've got ones such as the Elemental Bolt and um, the Heat Beam. Let's go with these two as my demonstrations. So, the Heat Beam is basically a version of flames that lasts, that goes for a far greater distance and is much more powerful. An elemental fury is just magical damage. And I do love the effects. But um, of course there's one very special spell that's added by Midas Magic which I can't leave out and that is the Summon Dragonling. So with an appropriate number of enemies um, and just occupying them with that for a second I'm gonna see if I can find my Summon Dragonling spell. Apparently I didn't think to add it to my quick list, so here we go. This summons a smaller cousin of a dragon. Oh, and actually it's worth noting that the Midas Bound Pickaxe spell actually just adds a pickaxe to your inventory, so don't use it too many times. And apparently half the Thalmor decide to run away. Here we go. Try and watch this from somewhere else. Just waiting for the dragonling now. I'm playing on a depth, which is probably why it's taking a while. But it adds, ba it adds basically a little dragon that follows you around and does what you say. Right, these things are stronger than I thought, so I'm going to bring out the big guns in Murder's Magic, which of course is the Blade of Ma Blaze of Magnus. I'll probably at some point make a video just dedicated to Murder's Magic spells, as they are, you know, there's so many of them, and they're all so brilliant. Your time is at its end. So anyway, with those spells done, let's move on to some less combat-centric mods. And for that we're going to need to travel to Whiterun. First mod I'm going to show when I get here is Sexy Whiterun. This isn't some mod that adds strippers everywhere or makes every character naked. It just it's just a it's just a texture overhaul, basically. It adds some more high resolution textures and it increases the contrast in the game, which I'll show you in a second. It's worth noting that one of the downsides of having high textures, loading packs, etc is the long load times as we all just unfortunately saw there anyway let's take a quick tour of this location and here we can see that the um, 
Even the wood has been made much more vibrant. And as I'm sure you've noticed, the roofs have been changed to a lovely bright blue. That is because I have downloaded the blue version of the mod. There is also a red version, which is closer to the standard housing, but still much better contrast, which gives it more of a high fantasy feel, and in my opinion, that's something that Skyrim was missing. I felt that um, Oblivion was definitely superior in that regard. It was something that worked so well for the Fallout games, I thought, the dreariness, especially in Fallout 3. But um, I think Skyrim, as a fantasy game, could do with a bit more vibrancy. So as you can see, all the roofs have been done. It's all across the whole of Whiterun. And um, that isn't all. There's also some texture upgrades to smaller things. They may not show up too well because I have a pretty weak computer. But, um, I think you can see here, this is somewhat more detailed than the normal version. I don't know if it's more detailed than the 2K texture packs that Bethesda released yesterday from when I'm recording this video. Um, I think this is pretty good mod. It doesn't appear to be very CPU intensive, otherwise I probably wouldn't be able to run it. And um, I fully recommend this mod to absolutely anyone, really. I mean, it's probably not for you if you prefer the dreary aesthetic, but... Um, I felt it didn't suit the theme of this game too much. Okay, the next mod I'm going to show you is another arm mod. And um, in my opinion this is one of the best armor mods that are out at the moment. And it adds the Black Sacrament armor, which provided my computer will load. I'll show you now. Uh, it, it adds a bunch of different pieces of apparel. I haven't got all of them here. Um, and as you can see, some of them are interchangeable. There's amulets and things. And this is the Black, a black Sacrament Armor mod. It is a retexture of the Nightingale armor without enchantments. But uh, as you can see here, it's a pretty good looking mod. It's also all, uh, it's also available for female characters, and hopefully, because I'm wearing a cowl, this won't look too weird. I can just show that off. I didn't do this for the um, I didn't do this for the the um, Knights of the Nine armor because I didn't have something over my face, and it would be very weird to have the female character body with a beard. And I personally find that rather an unpleasant thing to look at. But as you can see this is some pretty high quality work. I mean my computer only runs Skyrim on low quality and you can still see that this is a beautiful piece of armour. Uh, it's brilliant for using in the Dark Brotherhood quests and um, it's also got decent armor rating without being overpowered. Now uh, the next mod, again I'm going to show you, is called the Powerful Perks Ex Expanded mod. This adds tons and tons of new perks for every level. As you can see here it means there are plenty more destruction, novice destruction perks, it goes all the way up to 10. Uh, adept, expert, and master all get ranks instead of just being a one-off perk. Again, you can make oil spells much more powerful. I'm not running this for conjuration because it conflicts with the unrestricted conjuration mod I showed earlier, which allows you to use thrall spell on creatures, which I think is worth a lot. Um, but I think where this really comes into its own is in the crafting sections. I'm not sure about smithing actually, but um, as you can see here, this allows you to improve all your armors much more, meaning that you can have a character that has quite low one-handed skill, but can still be pretty powerful in hand-to-hand -hand combat. See it adds more enchanters, 
basically this means you can have incredibly powerful spells. Sorry, enchantments. And you can put up to three effects on the same item. I think you might even be able to get up to four. And um, as you see, that's for all the spells. And things like two-handed, one-handed. Again, basically this gives ranks to all the spells you're going to see. And I think this makes for a much more tailored character design. The only downside I'd say is it makes it even more difficult to get all the perks you want. But, again, it's a pretty nice mod. There aren't really many reasons not to try it out. And I think it makes useful addition to the game, especially as somebody who likes to collect perks, basically. Now, on to the Keep your distance. last mod I'm showing today. The Dover King Hideout, which is a player home mod. And you need to have any of your player homes. You can access it using the unlock command if you haven't bought them. But um, it adds a massive underground player home right in the middle of your hideout. Right in the middle of Skyrim, basically. There are doors to every player home in the game. You know, each of the major hold ones, if you live somewhere else, it's not as useful for you. So as you can see, it's got plenty of secure storage. It grows a couple of plants, and there are doors to every single player home. In here, you can also see that we've got mannequins in a sort of war room. This is really good. You can put all your weapons up on it, and I think it's just a much better way to store your stuff than keeping it all in boxes, basically. On from that, you, we've got a complete crafting area. We've got a smelter, grindstone, workbench, and a log there are also books scattered around that explain things in detail, and a working forge. It's a brilliant room. And on from that, we've got the other crafts, alchemy, and enchanting. So then we have, in the next room, we have the obligatory Jarl throne. As you can see here again, we've got nice modded armour. These shield racks might be tiny, but you can put normal size shields on them, I believe. Actually, I haven't tried it, I might shrink them down. And again, more weapons racks, and some of those two swords and a shield rack. And over here, you can see some more of the weapons that are available with the third era weapons mod. None of those are Jace's swords actually. So you can tell this is a throne, not just from the name, but also the way you sit in it. Ah, with a male character, at least. Where the way you sit in the throne is actually raising one hand to rest your chin on. Or at least it was in Ah, it was in another video I saw. Sorry, my bad. Maybe that's a detail that comes with having higher settings. Maybe that's just something that no longer exists. Um, as you can see in here, we've got a more homely aspect. There's a tavern, which I think is a great place that if in the future you can send your companions here, that would be very nice. And a nice fancy four-poster bed. And again, more personal storage. And something that I really like here is the tiny statues of the Spriggan, Ismagraw, and Nocturnal. Which are all very good. Again, we've got tiny mannequins here, just to demonstrate that these do work, although one appears to have stepped forwards. I'm going to pop some ebony armour onto it. As you can see, it gives you a tiny little mannequin with lots of great armour, which I think is, for want of a better word, adorable. 
through here we've got a nice hall again somewhere that I think followers that you're not currently using should whoa followers you're not currently using can go this is new this wasn't in the last version of the mod I saw but um, I would guess from the names that this is somewhere that you put every single dragon mask I'm not sure if something activates when you complete it or if it's just the display case however I do know that there is past all these bookshelves which I think are not all of them but most are scripted and these shrines which I still haven't actually worked out which one is missing but I'm pretty sure one of the nine is missing here we see a suspicious cabinet Yep, which you can open up and down here we see the dungeon I'm not entirely sure what we're going to find in here but um... this looks a bit like not what's found in Suthal the place where you fight Morakai in the Mages Guild quest, oh spoilers, in the Mages Guild quest and there is there we go so this is yeah it's a testing room that makes sense plenty of ale and um, I'm not sure what quite what's meant to be being tested here at the moment but uh, yeah this is again pretty impressive it's a way for you if you get this mod you can provide feedback to the creator and um, it can be tailor-made you can help shape this mod even if you're bad at modding so again we've got an alchemy room on the other side we have an enchanting room again with a mannequin I do like the abundance of mannequins here and there is a door that leads out on the other side and this door leads if you've downloaded it I haven't yet I will get round to it soon another mod which is adding something called the Dover King's Retreat, basically another player home and also it'll act as a fast travel point for this if you don't have a player home that's sold to you by a yarl so guys I've been the BC Playback I hope you've enjoyed this video there'll be links in the description telling you about all the mods there'll be an adfly link and a non adfly link I am trying to raise money for World Challenge, which is where I go and do community work in Borneo and trek through the rainforest for four, for four weeks. And uh, I'd really appreciate it if you have the time to click if you click the AdFly links. But I recognise not all of you do have the time. So um, just the one more thing, which is that I'm hoping to make this weekly, as you've probably guessed from the name. And your feedback is greatly appreciated if you want me to change the way I showcase the mods then you tell me if you want a specific mod included you tell me and um, I'll get round to it basically so I um, hope you've enjoyed this episode and thanks for watching